Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to do a feature overview of the Longer LK1. So I'll just start by saying that the longer LK1 did not come with this spool holder. This is an add-on after the fact. It came with a desk mounted one, but for portability in our environment here, we chose to use this. With that out of the way. So the LK1 comes with a glass bed on top of the aluminum heat bed and laminated to the top of their glass is a build tack kind of surface. Uh, lucky for you, this is the same dimensions, 300 by 300 as a CR10. So the Creality textured uh, glass would fit this perfectly and clip on in the same fashion. The bed here, unlike some others, is a 24 volt heated bed. The entire system is 24 volts, which is really nice. The heated bed is quick connected to, this, uh, to the cable here. Um, so it's not soldered directly onto the bed, which should make for an easier replacement if you ever require the need to do so. So on the extruder, uh, there are a few notable features here. Um, the spring here is uh, very stiff, which is great. It's putting a lot of pressure on the filament. Um, should help make sure that you have uh, some good traction there. There's also a very restricted filament path, uh, which if you're printing something like flexibles, uh, will be helpful for you to make sure that it doesn't end up kind of coming out through here. And then bolted instead of clipped on uh, is a uh, filament runout sensor. This filament runout sensor is not micro switch based. Uh, this is an optical filament runout sensor, um, which I also would prefer a contactless like this, um, especially uh, if you're pulling the filament out, it can get caught on that little lever of the micro switch. So they're using an axial cooling fan for the part cooling instead of like a blower or radial fan. Um, and it works surprisingly well. I mean, it works better than a lot of the very thin or undersized uh, radial fans do. Um, so it's kind of surprised by that. And that's directed by a nice cooling shroud at the bottom there. Moving over to the control box, just taking a brief look at it, it may remind you of another printer. Uh, Longer is an OEM manufacturer. So they manufacture printers for other uh, brand names, one of them being AlphaWise. So that's where this uh, kind of rings a bell. And it is a color touch screen on there and it's not running Marlin, it's running a proprietary firmware. Rumor has it that they're working on at least having a firmware version that would be BL touch enabled. And at best, they're gonna completely open source the firmware. Um, so that would be interesting to have yet another option in the market for us. Uh, we'll go through a few of the menu options and take a deeper look at that. So here we're just gonna poke around a little bit, give you a brief tour of the menu system. I'm gonna start in the more menu. And one thing you'll note is leveling. This doesn't have a leveling sensor per se, but at least it has quick, um, areas that you can jump the hot end to for your leveling sequence, so your four corners and your center. Um, others allow you uh, to you know, cycle through next step, next step, next step. This is nice if you're just targeting a specific area. And you can unlock the X and Y um, stepper motors independent of the Z. Go back by hitting more. So move head, pretty self-explanatory. You can move in all the different directions. You can home the individual axes. You could home all axes by doing this one here. Z up and down. Uh, and how much we're moving at a time. Each press moving 10 millimeters, one millimeters, five millimeters. Under files, you're gonna find a file browser here. Um, this is kind of a nice interface. I believe everything has to be uh, at the root, if I'm not mistaken, but I may be wrong because there is a folder back icon. We tend to dump everything in the root here. Preheating, you're gonna have your preheat settings for the uh, hot end. You've got your presets for PLA and ABS and actually the third preset, which is nice for PETG in this case. Under extrude, it's much like the move menu. We can extrude filament um, obviously, we're not up to temperature here, so we can't. And again, much like the other screens, we can choose the increments that we're, we're moving things at. Just gonna hop into the settings menu. So right here, it shows you the different acceleration and jerk values that we're using. And there's a few pages of settings. So this would be uh, akin to the information you would get at a Marlin using an M503 command. 
um, but just being able to view it on the screen in one kind of cohesive place is, is kind of nice. And if we go to the info screen, um, it tells you the build size and their firmware version and when it was built. So you can determine if there's an update available from them for you. So recovery, you can see it's dimmed out. The recovery menu would be there uh, if we lost power, we would be able to resume the print inside that menu. So in the office here, we've used the longer LK1 quite a bit. We've got hundreds of hours on them. And most recently we printed everybody a pen holder that clips onto the divider between our desks. And it's just a great example of the quality that you're able to achieve out of the printer. So hopefully you found this overview useful. Remember to like and subscribe, ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about this printer or anything else you've seen on the channel. Thanks for watching.